A good evening and happy Democracy Day. Welcome to another um, cycle of the Junior Achievement Nigeria Info session. So basically, we know that this session is to enlighten you on how best to submit a stellar application as it relates to the Venture Management Program, specifically for 2024. Um, before we kick off with the session, I'd like us to let us know where are you logged in from. I am logged in from Lagos, Nigeria, and my name is Goodness God Minister, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. So just let me know you at the chat session. Yeah, let me know. You can you can just tell me something funny about you or a fun fact about you. For example, me. I still, this is a fun fact, an actual fun fact that I don't know if I'm proud of. I still feel very weird wearing shoes, even if I've been wearing shoes since, <laughs> since like primary school or since I knew my left or my right, right? So you can just let us know something interesting about you before we kick off with the conversation for today. By the way, our panelists are already around and trust me, you're in safe hands. So let me know, I'll be looking at the chat box. I'm looking forward to just finding something interesting. Hello, hola to Bosum. Happy Democracy Day. Oh, wow. Hey, uh, you're so loyal, Simi. So Simi says, I'm logged in from Nigeria. Fun fact is I've had post notification on for Jan, so I know exactly when applications open for me. Hey, uh, <laughs> don't worry, everything will be fine. I'm glad you are here now. Dreams come true. Hi, Cynthia. She says she's logged in from Cross River State. Hi, my people. I always identify Cross River and Calabar. I mean, Cross River and Aquaibom as my people. By the way, I'm from Aquaibom. So Sonia John says she's logged in from Abuja. A fun fact about her is that I'm vocabulary vigilant. I'm a vocabulary vigilante as I correct my siblings over every wrong word said. Wow, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm scared though. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sonia. A Joseph Fashola says, I'm joining from Cardinal. I love the fact that people are joining from different parts. I'm so curious to see like everybody representing the 36 states here today. Food makes me dance. I think I'm I'm also with you. Food makes me dance too as well. So yeah, see, so this is also an opportunity to let your friends know or let your sister or whoever you need, you think should know about this, that um, Vim Info Session has started and it will be great for them to be here because this is about the best place they can be at this point in time, especially if they want to apply for the 2024 Venture and Management Program. So now I'll kick off with the conversation because we don't want to like spend so much time here. I also know that some of us have like some places to visit or are just coming back from some places. So yeah, my name is Goodness God and I'll be moderating the event for today. I work with Junior Achievement Nigeria as a Senior Marketing and Communications Officer. Yeah, so in Junior Achievement Nigeria, we're tailored to what's investing in young people between the ages of five to 35 with skills around financial literacy, work readiness, entrepreneurship, and digital literacy. So VIMP is actually like the, um, it encompasses all of those core pillars, right? And so there's no, it doesn't even leave out any bit of the four core pillars. So basically you are here because you want to learn about how best you can shoot the best of application for VIMP, right? And today with me, we have very interesting, um panelists here with me Oluwa Tobi Ogunlesi and he 
he was a VIM um, participant as of 2012. You also have with me um, Ianu Olua Aliyu, VIM participant 2020, and then also Demilade Adelakum, VIM participant 2022. So you are set for an amazing time today. But before we shoot out with them, I'll just call on the senior programs um, officer to help us with an opening remark. Over to you, Tosin. All right, thank you, goodness. Can you all hear me? Goodness, can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can. All right, thank you so much. Okay, uh, one fun fact about me will be that I can be indoor all day without putting on the fan, and I will not sweat, right? Yes, so I have people that can testify to this. All right, good evening, everyone. Trust that day has been going on well. Thank you so much, goodness. And I hope that would have a good time on the call this evening. I want to use this medium to say happy democracy day to every one of us. And in the spirit of patriotism, I want to use this medium to congratulate all Nigerians on the call <clears throat> on our 25th democracy celebration, right? And we hope that the labors of our heroes past would not be in vain. Amen. Yes, yeah, so on behalf of the board, the management, our acting executive director, Olaolu Akogun, the person of Olaolu Akogun, the staff members of Junior Achievement Nigeria. I want to welcome you all to the 2024 Venture and Management Program Info Sessions. And the words of Lai Wasabi, you all will agree with me that information helps us fly, right? You can interpret that <laughs> any way you want to, <laughs> which is exactly what this session should help us do <clears throat> with how to ace your, your BIM application. For the sake of those that are just joining Junior Achievement, that are just getting to know Junior Achievement Nigeria as a result of this program, um, just like Goodness said earlier, Junior Achievement Nigeria is a non-profit organization um, affiliated to Junior Achievement worldwide. And Junior Achievement is present in over 120 countries of the world with the aim to equip young individuals with the skill set and mindsets to build thriving communities. To achieve this vision, <laughs> we achieve this vision by inspiring and preparing the young individuals to succeed in the global economy. And speaking of young individuals, our focus is children and young adults between the ages of five and 27. And as a matter of commitment, we contribute to the human capital development of the country in training young individuals through our hands-on practical programs revolving around financial literacy, digital literacy, entrepreneurship, and work readiness. And as an organization, through our programs for primary school bills, secondary school students, special institution, and um, post-secondary school individuals generally. We've inspired and impacted over 1 million young individuals across the state of the country, including the federal capital territory. And one of such, one of such program is this Venture Management Program, where graduates and core members between the ages of 18 and 27 have access to a week of an all-expense paid intensive learning at Lagos Business School. This program is all encompassing with the aim of equipping the participants with the essential skills of how to be relevant in the world of work. So I want to congratulate you all for taking our time to participate in this info session. Um, at this juncture, I would like to appreciate our alumni, our very own VIMP veteran, Uluwa Tobi Ogulesi, who took part in this program in the year 2012. <laughs> um, Yanulua, who also participated, Yanulua Liu, who also participated in the program in the year 2020, the VIMP Vice President and outstanding female participant um, for the 2020, 2022 cohort, Demilade Adelako, and our very own Senior Marketing and Communications Officer, Goodness Godwin Osoro, um, who also did participate in the program in the year 2020 as well. Thank you all for accepting to do this because despite your busy schedule, we do not take it for granted. Thank you so much, and we look forward to all that you have to offer on this call. Finally, before I pass over the mic to Mike, um, to goodness, would, um, as we would be going through the program, if you are a prospective participant, this is especially for you, right? Please pay attention to all that will be said during the program, during this info session, ask questions. One of the things that um, we take seriously at Junior Achievement Nigeria when we are having conversations like this with young individuals is that we encourage them to speak up. Don't... Don't um don't keep anything to yourself. Speak up. Be be open to your thoughts. Like be 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 available to express yourself. 
And one thing that stands us out at Junior Achievement Nigeria is that we do not believe that any question is foolish, right? Um, our, our speakers on the call this evening will be available to answer all your questions appropriately and as deserved, as they'll be taking you through the experience that they had from the application process to participating in the program. I want to wish you all a good time on the call this evening, and I look forward to seeing the outstanding 100 participants at this year's cohort of the Venture in Management Program. Um, one more last thing before I go. If you would, if you are sure that you'll be a part of this year's Venture in Management Program, let me see your affirmation in, this, in the chat box. I don't know how your affirmation will go, but let me see it in the chat box. Let's keep bubbling. Let's keep bubbling. Yes. Uh, um, what is that affirmation that you want to see? Is it that you want to tell us that, um, um, what's it called? Dreams do come true. If you want to say it, that like you'll be a part of this, um, um, being participant this year. Let me see it in the chat box. Yes, I'll be there. That's, that's so awesome from Akman. Yes, I am Eunice. I, I love that energy, no matter what. I love that energy. <laughs> yes, I, I look forward to seeing you all at this year's venture management program for those that are making it to the 100 participants that will qualify for this program. This year. Thank you, everyone, and do well to enjoy the program. Over to you, please. Thank you so much, Justin. That was so inspiring. In fact, <laughs> I was so inspired. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. We really do appreciate. I'm speaking on their behalf. I'm sure you guys will still have time to like ask questions and then um, give one or two comments. So now I'll just go over to the speakers for them to introduce themselves. Like I mentioned, we have Oluwatobi Ogunlesi, we also have Iyanu Aliyu, and then um, Timla De Adelakon. So um, over to you, Oluwatobi. Please kindly introduce yourself. Um, yes, good evening, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes, we can yes. hear you. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be uh, part of the BIM 2024 um, information session. My name is Oluwatobi Ogunlesi. I work as corporate communications manager with Nigeria's largest indigenous digital infrastructure provider, Pan African Towers. Um, I did VIM in 2012. Um, I have a general management MBA from Lagos Business School as a result of um, aftermath of me participating in VIM. And in 2012, 22 to 2023, I also worked as the marketing and communications manager for Junior Achievement Nigeria in yeah, 2022 to 2023 as marketing and communication manager, uh, managing VIM for the year 2022 and 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Toby. I was going to mention that Toby was actually my manager as at this time last year, but you already said it. <laughs> so thank you so much, Toby. And so over to you, um, Ianu. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can hear you. All right, all right. Thank you very much. I was re actually very inspired by the opening session. It almost felt like I was going to apply again, you know. <laughs> so, but thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Um, my name is Yanudua, and I currently work as a commercial manager for Advancely. It's a fintech and that majorly drive um, sales and marketing um, efforts. Um, I was in VIMP in the year 2020. The interesting thing is that I, I've been on both sides of the divide. I've, you know, been a participant. I've had the privilege to join in Austin. And now I'm here to, you know, share some of the lessons that I've learned being on both sides of the divide. And, you know, if there's one thing I remember about VIMP, I think the first day in 2020, uh, when I walked into the room, I was wearing a very long shirt. It was oversized. It was from an event that I had, I had gone for like a year before. And I remember some of my friends telling me like months after that, they felt like, what was this awkward guy just walking in with oversized shirt and stuff? <laughs> but looking back now, it was a good experience. And I'm really excited to share this experience here. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you so much, everyone. So um, I would have to like push, go on with the questions um, because we're still waiting on Timiladi. She's asked for a bit of excuse. So now let's go on to the first question that I have for both Olua Toby and then Timmy. It says that, how can participant leverage passion, societal problems and personal experiences for a successful theme application? I'll take it again. How can participants leverage their passion, societal problems, and then personal experiences for a successful BIM application? Over to you, Toby. Okay, thank you very much, goodness. Um, I mean, in answering your question, I, I think the first uh, question I would push to prospective participants will be uh, what drives you, what drives them? You know, because BIM, the essence of BIM, is to cause a change, behavioral, attitudinal, character, um, mental change, analytical thinking. You know, so when I ask that question, what drives you? I mean, you need to be focused and directed towards a, um, a, a passion, an objective, you know? So in understanding what your passions are, in understanding what your motivations are, it helps you and guides you to be able to narrow down your own personal objectives towards the fulfillment of an objective, be it um, um, African, you know, related or within your environment, within your own, you know, workspace, you know. And I would also say that, uh, I mean, one of my own favorite personal uh, quotes in life, you know, is uh, that the purpose of contact is impact, you know. So when you fully understand and you are fully aware of the intended change, the intended impact that you hope to achieve, you hope to see in the next uh, six months, 12 months, one year, two years, three years of your life, you know, that helps you to be able to, um, while putting in your application, because there's an element of the application that talks about your, your motivation, why you want to apply for BIM, and why you should be considered for, uh, for the venture in uh, management program. So that helps you know that you have a problem and you have a solution that you hope to uh, build in addressing that particular problem. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Toby. Um, I, I think that one of these that has touched me in what you've said is the fact that we need to learn to have a drive. I mean, there's always a reason for doing something, right? And you don't just want to, as much as, oh yes, vim, 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 there should be something pushing you beyond all oh, the accolades that comes with the program, right? And that's basically a, a summary of what Toby has said. There has to be a compelling factor as to why you are going for the program. And that even pushes you through the application process. So the next question, which I have for um, Iano is, what are the pitfalls to avoid during the application for them? And this question is intentional for you. I mean, because like you said, you've you've been at the side of the, at the receiving end. You've also been at the side where you plan the program from initiation, maybe not necessarily initiation, but then from planning stage to execution, right? And so it's, it's just best that you help us with answering this question. So what are the pitfalls to avoid during the application for them? Also mention common mistakes that you think that applicants make that disqualify them from this process. Did you get the question? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. So, so uh, um, please go. Uh, your time is breaking. I uh, no, I think Hello, your network you is breaking. Okay, yes, I can hear you now. It's breaking. Okay, so let me go off the video and see if it helps. Okay. Okay, great. So um, if there's any time that, you know, everyone can hear me, please just show me in the chat box because I'm looking at the chat as I'm, you know, talking about this. So there, there are a lot of pitfalls, actually, that I think... Um, 
there are some that are more prominent than the others, and there are some that are less, you, you'll probably be penalized less. But I'll start from, yes, you can't see me because I'm trying to make sure that you can hear me clearly, sorry. I think the weather has, has affected the network today. So I'll start from, um, I'll start from your entire story, you know, I think one of the mistakes that candidates make or applicants make is that um, they do not really take time to think about their story. Um, you know, it's so easy, especially for people like yourselves that, you know, are probably applying for so many applications, trying to get opportunities to develop your skills, to get in, in front of people that can help your career, to network with more people. You have too many applications, so it looks like sometimes you're all over the place and sometimes you just want to take the application and just hit the send button as fast as you can but sometimes it's best to just pause for a minute and really uh Kelechi, you can hear me can anyone still hear me if you can hear me please just drop it on the chat box sorry okay thank you thank you very much thank you all right, I like the motivation. It's, it's a good boost. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I think sometimes it's good to take a break and just really understand what are you trying to, what story are you trying to um, uh, relate to your, um, to the person, you know, reviewing your essays or something. You want to make sure that your story connects. Don't be too eager to eat that button. You're sending things like your resume, you're sending things like essays, Everything has to connect, right? You don't want to say something and the, the person reviewing your essay is wondering, okay, you said this in your resume and then you're saying something entirely different in your essay and then the person is wondering, trying to understand the context of what you're really saying because they can't relate to it. And uh, that brings me to my next point, right? I think another mistake that applicants make is they don't use the star approach to answer their essay questions. One thing you should understand is the person reviewing your essay probably doesn't have the same experience that you have as come from a different background comes from different jobs so they can't relate to what you are saying so that's why it's very important to use the star approach you have to stay the situation or context of every essays i know there about there were about four essays last year i don't know how many they are this year but you have to look at the situation or context you have to look at the the um, task you have to look at the actions that you executed and you have to look at the results as well to our learning point as well. So you want to make sure that from the start of your essay to the end, the person reviewing is in sync. They understand everything you are saying. It makes a lot of sense. I think another thing is um, applicants, you know, probably because they have too many essays, just you charge GBT and, you know, the answer there is really generic. When you're submitting an uh, essay for VIMP, you have to personalize it. The person really wants to connect to your story and feel like this person has to be here. This person would make the most impact to be here and will take the most out of this program. So yes, you can use ChatGPT, but you need to know how to use it the right way. You need to know how to give it the right prompts. You even want to make sure you have written your story and then you're probably asking it to edit for you so that what you're writing is entirely different from what every other person is writing. Um, goodness, please just let me know in the chat if I'm spending over time and how many minutes i have left to please go on uh, go ahead okay thank you so i think another pitfall is um waiting to the last minute to apply trust me there are probably over a thousand to probably two thousand people that will probably apply or more you know for this program and you cannot wait to the last minute because when when and uh, the the uh, reviewer is looking at the applications. They're probably tired when they get to the 2,000 person. So they probably have, you know, or 200 or 500 names from the 2,000 list. And they now have to start cutting. So by the time they get to the later part, they're like, if it's not exceptional and spectacular, they just dish that particular application. And it happens across board in many applications. People reviewing it are humans. So you want to make sure that you start working on your story from now. You can even check last uh, essays, try to figure out how to start having a draft of what you're working on so that it makes sense for you to have something ready by the time the application is out. I think another pitfall is um, 
just coming for the program, not engaging with giant activities. You you need to you need to start doing that if you've not been doing that. Um, I'm not saying there's enough time for you to start volunteering, but there's time for you to follow Jan online. There's time for you to um, respond, interact. There's time for you to um, there's time for you to you know comment, reshare, re like make yourself really visible. Because again, humans are the ones that are reviewing these applications, and our reviews can be subjective. Right, they are subjective to how we feel about the applications that we see. So you want to make sure that you distinct yourself from the from the from the crowd. So I think two more points I would just had is um, not properly aligning why you need the program. The essays I can't go through all the uh, questions, but you will see them. But eventually, all that we really all that the program really cares about is. Why are you applying? Why is this program so important for you? What have you done from leadership standpoint to even qualify to get selected for this program? Because there are a lot of people that want to get into this program. So why should you be the, the right person to be picked above every other person? So you, they also want to know, why do you need a program? Is it going to help you to navigate the next phase of your life? Like, what's, your motivating, what's your motivating story? Why, why are you here? Like, what, what have you done from... Your, you know, from school, uh, why you're in school to this point, and how does this all fit together? So before you even pick the pen and start writing, you need to figure out what angle are you coming from? Are you coming from the entrepreneur angle? Are you coming from the business angle? Are you coming from um, NGO angle, from social? Everyone is welcome. Everyone needs management skill and VIMP is for everyone, but VIMP is for everyone that is ready to maximize the opportunity and that can show that this opportunity would mean the world to them. I think the last thing I also want to say is there is this part, I don't know if it's still going to be included this year or if it's included, where uh, you have to give a TED Talk. That TED Talk is a point for you to show that you are a dreamer. Vimp likes people that have big ambition. If you look at the history of people that have gone through Vimp, you will know that the program is for big dreamers. Look at the likes of um, the, the, I think, president of CEO of a Faith Foundation. There are so many names I can't remember here. So we want to see. I'm not going to be reviewing this year. I'm saying we as you know part of the system now. But you want we want to see that um, Vim, you coming to Vim, you're showing that you're a dreamer, you're an imaginative person, that you you have big dreams, and that's. That's where you can show this. And that question where you have to talk about a TED talk that can positively impact your community. Nobody's asking you is realistic. But that's a great solution for an innovation. So just dream really big about your application before you start writing anything and before you hit the, the summit button. So I think I'll just end it here because I think we still have a number of questions to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Yanu. You, you spoke very spot on. Um, and I say that because apologies, goodness, first of all, apologies, everyone, goodness is network um, sort of took her out of the call. So I will be stepping in pending when she's back. Right now, you were very spot on as it relates to aligning to the Junior Achievement Nigeria's goals and vision and basically just familiarizing yourself with the community because I see that that is a very critical way for you to even integrate with the community, right? So, I mean, there's a great narrative around, oh, I want to do Vim and all of those things. But the question is, do you even know the brand behind Vim, right? Have you read, so how, how far have you read, you know, to be able to, um, to be able to even give the narrative around Vim? And of course, a key part of what we do at Vim is also, you know, the social impact side of it. So you cannot even integrate into the community or you cannot even plug in into that kind of system if you're not even familiar with all that, you know, Jan as, a, as an entity is about because the ecosystem is integrated in, you know, social impact narratives and all the other things that, you know, connect to what we do, right? So it's very critical that if anyone is going to be applying, don't worry, you get the link. It's actually out, but you'll get it on the chat box very soon. Um, so it's very important. And, and uh, the reason why I'm saying you get the link later for those asking is, 
you need to get this information. If you do not get this information and you are, don't, don't put the card before the horse, like they say, and change for the link. And when it's time to apply, you're trying to remember all that was said during the call. So pay attention. The link is always accessible on all our social media platforms, but pay attention to the information that you need here first, right? That's very critical. Okay. Thank you so much, Yanu, for that. Um, so I would like us to have Temilade speak. And I think what's critical for us, for Temilade to speak about is what inspired her to apply for VIMP. And also because VIMP is, VIMP basically spotlights the leader in you, right? And brings it out, right? And so it's important to know what leadership, um, um, do I say issue or um, cause, you know, you were addressing at the time of your application and how, the, how did VIMP, you know, sort of amplify that leadership cause that you had and what has been the experience so far? So let's hear from you, Timladi. Awesome. Thank you, Toby. Um, I, I know I, Toby, speaker. So good to uh, meet everyone. I didn't get to introduce myself earlier. Um, I could do that, like, very briefly, if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Timladi. Oh, sure, please go ahead. So my name is Temladi, um, VIM class 2022, class vice president, and also like most outstanding female participants. Um, so excited to be here. I presently work at Google as a product marketer. I do stuff around brand, product marketing, growth marketing, and a couple of other things I do within the company. One thing that I'm very passionate about is um, getting more girls in STEM. I'm a big advocate of education, technology, and more girls in STEM. Uh, not to take too much of time and address the question I'm being asked to answer, what inspired me to apply for VIM and what, what leadership issue was I addressing at the time of my application? I, I would say that for me, my inspiration to apply for VIM came from like a desire to like deepen my understanding of business management and to develop like the necessary skills I needed to be an effective leader. So prior to, join, to joining VIMP, I knew that VIMP had the reputation for providing like comprehensive and immersive learning experience. I remember when Ian was speaking, for me, I did my research, did research on previous VIMP alum. And just like Ian said, some of them have gone far and wide globally. So that was one of the things that drew me to applying to Veeam. And also because I've always heard of the amazing Lagos Business School and I've never had the opportunity to like visit or take classes from Lagos Business School. And knowing that being a Veeam um, student or Veeam candidate to allow me have like classes from Lagos Business School, that got me really excited. So those are some of the things I saw that made me apply. I sort of saw it like as an invaluable opportunity for me to gain practical insights and even real world knowledge that will prepare me for a successful career in management and leadership in general. Now, at the time of my own application, I was on a project. The major issue as I then was, I was, I sucked at sort of like coordinating a diverse team of stakeholders especially stakeholders that are older than me, that are more, um, what's the word now, in terms of like level, they're like many levels ahead of me. I found, it, I found it a bit hard coordinating those stakeholders because each of them had their own different perspective and priorities and trying to like balance the varying interests while maintaining my own clear and unified vision for the project was proving to be quite challenging. Thanks to Veeam, I actually learned effective strategies for managing complex stakeholders and even complex um, project, I understood better how to make like decision making in terms of like necessary skills to make decision. I also sort of understood how to lead like diverse team. To be very honest, I'm not trying to make Vim feel good here, but sincerely, Vim actually exceeded my own expectations for the program because it provided me like practical tools and framework that I was able to immediately use to apply to my project. Because Vim is like a one week. Is a one week like boot camp, but my project had been ongoing like few weeks before before Vim, and of course the project extended till after Vim. So some of the knowledge and toolkits and resources I got from Vim, I applied them to my project, and it sort of it boosted my confidence and also get, got me more con competent as a leader. And I'm grateful for the impact that's had on my professional growth in general. Yeah, that's how I'm going to answer the question. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for your responses. I'm sure that we're all taking notes. And for those who are sharing questions, please be patient. I, we would want you to milk all the information from our amazing speakers. Once we are done, we'll pick up the questions. Don't worry, we're paying attention to all your questions as well. Okay, um, to Toby, um, who, is, who happens to be my namesake, and uh, amazingly, my, do I call him? Yeah, 
my predecessor in the position I hold currently at Junior Jemen Nigeria. Um, I think it will be good to know for participants how they can leverage their passion, focusing on societal problems and personal experiences in putting their narrative together as it relates to the application for them. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Toby. I think that was the first question I answered. Right. Okay. Apologies. Yeah, so tell me that. Yeah. Yeah, tell me how to answer that question. Yes, I noticed the answer. I thought you had not answered. Okay. 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 Great. Awesome. Okay. Let me move to your next question so that we are moving right at it. Um. Okay. So, in what ways did the program challenge you to think differently and dream bigger in the area of your career? What made unique? Uh, what what made VIMP unique for you as a participant? And of course, in the different roles that you have even played as it relates to VIMP. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Toby, for this question. Uh, I mean, the question says, in what ways did the program challenge me to think differently and dream bigger? Um, I, will, I will start by saying that um, in 20... 2012, early 2012, I think March, February, March 2012, when I finished my uh, mandatory NYSE program, I had little or zero idea about what I wanted to do with life. And at that point, I was, I think I was somewhere in Abel Kuta, Ogun State, I mean, back from NYSE. And I just saw the newspaper. Uh, publication for uh, application for the venture and management program, and then it was sponsored by Accenture, Chevron. Um, I think total. I, I really cannot remember. Then it was even venture in enterprise management program VM as at that time. So I saw the newspaper publication, and they had said that it was an all expense paid program, and you know they were going to show at least just hundred people. And so I just like, gave it a shot because I had little or no idea about what I wanted to do. I saw this you know, opportunity, I applied, and I was shocked you know, to receive an email saying, congratulations, you've been shortlisted for, you know, being for 2012. And then I had to you know, come to Lagos for the entire um, week. Um, I mean, second, oh, sorry, undergraduate, education from a federal university i mean we all know how it goes i mean the lecturer comes to class is either dictating notes to you or you are buying handouts i mean that vim was different from that I, I used to think i didn't understand what it means to be uh, uh, to have analytical critical thinking and analytical skills until i participated in the venture in management program in 2012 because Junior Achievement Nigeria, in partnership with Lagos Business School, organizes uh, the, the BIM program. And the mode of the program is the case study methodology, which is uh, what is used in the Western world, where uh, you, you work with case studies. You get your lesson notes ahead of class. You have notes to read. You have case studies to, to read. To analyze, you have questions at the back of every case, even though there's no right or wrong answer, but that particular case study methodology challenges your thinking. You know, you have exhibits, you know, at the back of your case studies, you have numbers, you have to analyze, you know, your cases. I mean, I, I'm sorry to say it, but then without analyzing cases, we used to say, you know, be a part of conversations because. You can't just arrive at important, you know, life or business decisions without having to deal with, you know, the financial aspect, you know, the different aspects. You know, so coming into venture and management program and being taken through that case study methodology, you know, where you have to read your cases, you have to come to class. I mean, class sessions are like boardroom sessions where you sit like executives and you are discussing, you know, crucial and important um, uh, business scenarios as it affects your organization, I mean, in a, in a uh, role play method, and you have to come up with solutions. Now, these solutions have to be guided by, you know, different uh, assumptions, different thought processes, different statistics, uh, both qualitative and quantitative. 
you know, so for me, I mean, all of those things, I, I mean, I was new to all of those things. And, you know, they helped me to understand that I could use my brain, you know, to analyze situations. And this was what prompted me um, about six or seven months after, you know, to proceed for my general management MBA, full-time, you know, MBA at Lagos Business School, uh, September of that same year, you know, after I've been. And this is how many years after graduation from LBS, 10 years after graduation from LBS, yeah, 2014, 10 years after, uh, I mean, I have been able to apply and adapt all of those um, um, knowledge, you know, all of those, you know, skills that I picked up from the venture in uh, management program. So it helps me to analyze, you know, different scenarios. Some of the classes and case studies that you, you know, be taught on the program, you know, have to deal with, you know, business ethics, understanding the nature of human beings, uh, making financial decisions, um, understanding the economic environment of your know, business. I mean, it, it, it covers every facet of um, of the professional and entrepreneurial, you know, workspace. After that, you know, so I, I, I give it to Bim. Um, I mean, all of this, you know, knowledge, all of these skills have helped me. You know, ten years after, sorry, it's twelve years after Bim. You know, I'm still getting to apply. You know, all of these, you know, trainings and skills. Um, 2022 and 2023, while I worked in Junior Achievement in Nigeria as the uh, marketing and communications manager before to be Ola also, I also got to manage, you know, the BIM cohort for 2022 and 2023. And even sitting in class with them, you know, for the um, um, one week and, you know, spending time with them in the in their you know, hotels or in their lodges, you know, it made me feel like I was doing that program again, especially listening to some of the, you know, the case studies, the way they, you know, had their group meetings, group presentations, solutions, you know, to critical business scenarios. So, you know, so I, I give it to venture and management program. Um, I have not stopped, you know, using and applying the knowledge and the, you know, practical insights that I learned on the program. So they have all helped to shape every opportunity I have had, you know, post uh, post BIM, post MBA, they have helped to shape every organization I have worked, you know. So that that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toby. Very insightful. I mean, that's the drill that BIM would give to anyone. You just and and, and it also shows the intensity that comes to, you know, putting the content and, you know, the program together in its entirety. Okay, so we'll move on to Iyanu, and we want you to speak primarily from the angle of skills and knowledge as it relates to business and management, right? Um, I know that you're working in an organization now, and we want to believe that there's been transferable knowledge from them that you are currently applying in your work. So how did BIM help you develop your skills and knowledge in business and management, Ian? Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, I think I have to ask every time for um, you guys to drop it in the chat if you can hear me clearly. Um, that's the, fine, that's don't what... worry. You have a very collaborative audience, so you get that. <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, I, I think, let me, before I even talk about the skills and the knowledge, let, let me just paint a picture because I think, um, you know, I can talk about skills like uh, accounting and finance, strategy, social enterprise. But the thing was, when I got into VIMP, I um, actually didn't, didn't want to apply because I wasn't exactly sure um, at that time, if because I, I was very busy trying to um, uh, pivot my company's business model from being an NGO to a social enterprise, so I was it was it wasn't a time where I had that time to commit to attending programs. But some of the people I look up to as mentors were like, "Yeah, no, just go for it. You know, this would really change a lot of things for you." And so, talking specifically into the programs that in, into the kind of activities that we had at, at Vimp, like. Let me let me start from talking about the 
um, case based literature methods that um, uh, Toby referred to, because that's something that was new for me as well. And it really helped me build skills like um, confidence, you know, learning to uh, defend the points that you make. Because I think that's something that we struggle to do, especially for someone like me that is probably too humble. So you're most likely not as assertive as you should be. But when you're doing a case-based, like uh, a case-based, you know, lecture method, you you have to speak up. Everybody has to speak up, and you have to be able to make a point for why you are deciding that this thing is this way, right? So that that was the first thing for me. It created that opportunity for us to. Um, work together in smaller groups because I think the first thing that I did when we got into the program was even to divide us into groups and so you had a group that you had to work with for some projects you had to work with them on a marketing project on a new business pitch that you're going to do at the end of the at the end of the program and entrepreneurship competition so firstly I helped to work in a group I started to beyond the training itself I started to learn from people in my group. I, I had some very remarkable friends, to, to be honest, that are still, you know, friends with me today. Um, you know, aside learning all the skills that I learned from the program, I've learned personally from these people. There are people, um, names, people like, uh, I, I think I'll just, I'll just mention names, uh, shout out to them wherever they are. Uh, people like Torishi, who was organizing um, accounting and finance training, even besides the one we had to do at class. You know, we had people like Ajiro that was like a master of, you know, business uh, planning and I had all these guys in my group. So we we had to come up with something like these are guys that want excellence in everything they do. So that really pushed me as well together with our group to kind of deliver something that, you know, we were proud of at the end of the day. I think we won the entrepreneurship competition, you know, and that's for someone that, you know, came from an, an, an NGO background. So I didn't really have so much contest into actual entrepreneurship. But through that program, I learned a lot in that area. We're trying to pivot, like I said earlier, to social entre uh, entrepreneurship in my company. So some of the skills that were helpful to me was really understanding the financial bit of business. Because before that time, we've been running on grants and free money. So um, that's a very different uh, ball game from, you know, running a business. So I had to... I had to learn that. I had to learn a bit more on strategy because the case-based election method really forced you to think about things properly. So I had to learn a bit about strategy, learn about uh, general management. Um, we had a uh, marketing assignment where we had to create a pitch, a, a video pitch for to market a particular product. And we had to do that within just about three or two days. We had to make, you know, video campaigns, uh, think about the concept, design the, uh, design the video, design the everything that has to do with the script and everything to create a marketing, a marketing uh, content, a video marketing content. We had to do that within about two to three days, and that was something that really stretched my mind. I started to understand more things about branding. Um, about uh, marketing and those things were really game changer for me because I remember coming out of that program uh, my company had some of the wildest marketing campaigns that you know were like the talk of the social media especially LinkedIn at the time so and all of those things were built off of the background that I had in that program we also had opportunities uh, for uh, to, to build our experience in community service we had um, a community initiative or a community service uh, activity at the end of the program. And then, you know, that's like an icing on the cake because you're not just learning for yourself. They're also giving us the opportunity to give back to other people, to give back to secondary school students, to train them, to educate them on some of the things that we have learned in the course of the program. So that was really impactful for me. I think the final thing was also the um, career fairs. So, of course, career fairs, you probably think, oh, it's just opportunity for you to get jobs. But, you know, it's also an opportunity for you to build um, skill sets in the areas of um, interviewing skills, in the areas of um, improving your CV. So knowing that that opportunity was going to be there for me, I had to take time before coming for the program to make sure that my CV was fine-tuned, uh, my my interviewing skills were slightly better, you know, just 
getting ready for the program. And, you know, just adding to all of these points that I've made, if there's anything that I would say uh, in terms of preparing for this program is to make sure above all things, above all the classes, above every, because the classes, you know, would help you. But beyond the classes, what, what would help you is the networks that you build from the program. So you have to, even if you're a quiet person, you have to prepare to network with people. I have so many friends from Vim today that I can just send a message and, you know, they're like one phone call away and they've really helped me. I have some of them that I've joined as faculty on uh, my uh, social enterprise programs for free because of the uh, relationship that we built in the program, right? So if there's anything I would advise is to, you know, be when you get there, don't don't just form carcass with certain people. Just build your network, engage with people, engage with the facilitators, engage with the organizers, engage with as many people as you can engage because that network is going to take you far. Thank you. Wow, I mean, you just dropped gem. You've literally dropped gem. Like, I hope everyone is taking note of all that you've just shared because. I, I totally agree. I mean, I know that I'm in some of the VIMP groups and sometimes I see the way they share opportunities among, among themselves. And you would know that this is for sure that a community has, be, has been built from this experience, right? There's also the angle where a couple of persons have actually come together to start up a business, you know, from just their social impact and project that they've kicked off and identifying something that they can add to the, you know, to the society, a value that they can bring to the society and they literally become solution providers just from that. So one thing I know that we have experienced even from the people that have gone through the, the, the program as experienced. And one thing, one, one unique thing that you can tie to all of them is that they are solution providers. And I know, I mean, we all know the, the, the situation with the economy today, we're in that, we're in that phase where you can't afford to be a problem provider or a complaint provider, if I may put it that way. You need to be solution driven. I mean, we are futuristic in what we're, whatever we're doing now. Um, it's the future of tech, you know, all those narratives and all of those things, Gen Next and everything. It's still driven to being a solution provider in the way you even approach, you know, the economy. I mean, people say, oh, there's so many things going on in Nigeria, but excuse me, people have been right? Like people go through VIMP and solutions are coming. So it's not so much to concentrate on what you don't have, but basically begin to look at how you can leverage this kind of opportunities to build the network that you need, you know, to evolve in whatever you want to do. Okay, so we'll go on to Tammy Lade. Thank you, Iyanu, for that uh, insightful um, tip. Okay, so Iyanu, you served as the Vice President of VIMP 2022. And you emerged as your set's most outstanding female participant. I mean, we all heard it when you gave your portfolio and introduced yourself. So tell us, what did you do differently? I mean, I'm sure people find that admirable, right? And you, currently you're in a position where everyone is you're in, a, in an organization and in a position where people are likely to think that, oh my God, how did she get there and all of those things, right? Why would we focus on that? would like you to tie it in, in a way to speak to how, you know, the experience in VIM in total has, you know, helped you along the journey. So let's talk to your expertise being an ESCO, you know, unique roles and all of that, and then tying it into, yeah, what you currently do. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Toby. And shout out once again to Iyanu and um, Toby Speaker. <laughs> You both are doing well. I'm literally like, it feels like I'm learning from, I'm learning again, even though I've been like a VIM participant. So yeah, um, like I mentioned during my introduction, I was the vice president of my court and also like the most outstanding female participant. And I must say, it's truly an honor really. And I say this because I must acknowledge everyone in my VIM court. Everyone was uniquely outstanding. And once again, I'm giving like a shout out to 2022 court. Uh, reflecting on the experience, like being like the class vice president or the court vice president, and at the same time being like the most outstanding participant, it's interesting that I remember like resuming on a, I think we resumed on a Sunday, going into my hotel room, trying to meet my roommate, saying, oh, what's your name? What do you do? And all of those kind of things. And then we got an information saying there's going to be like a meeting and then we would elect like class, class presidents and then vice president as well you have to give a pitch things are looking like pretty serious i'm like all up all up i wasn't ready for this and then i was speaking with some of the friends i mean they're like okay let's let's try to speak together we think you should go for the class vice president 
I think that, again, I had the support of like the court really, maybe because I presented my, these are the things I had for the class for like one week, like it's a one week program, then you have to pitch yourself saying, for the next one week, I'll be doing A, B, C, D for each and every one of you. So I came up with a very sincere plan, I, and which was like, I wanted like to have people to have a balance of like academics and fun. So that was what I pitched to the class. And then my folks voted for me. I mean, the cohort voted for me and I emerged like class vice president. So once again, I would say like shout out to my class for believing in me. And I hope I didn't fall anybody's hand. But also to reflect a bit, I would say that from the beginning of the program or even before I joined the program, since the day I got the congratulations, welcome to Vim, I made sure to genuinely connect with folks that had joined the program mm -hmm. previously, asking them questions like, how was the experience for you? What do you think I can do before the program begins so that I'm preparing myself for success at the end of the program? I ask people questions, what advice you can give me before I resume the program? So even when I joined the program, I now made like conscious efforts to like actively engage with every aspect of the program. When it comes to like discussion in class, I always had my hands raised. Most time you always find me in front of the class. I join pretty early. I come very early in the morning, make sure I get like a good seat in front of like the class because we're like in a Lagos business school classroom. We also had like sessions where we were like in study groups. Almost every day we had like study groups and each different each of the different days you had like different study groups. So I always make sure that, okay, oh, I contributed that. in, sorry. Okay, let me just go ahead. I always made sure I contributed in the study groups. Um, not Contributing does not mean always having to speak. That's one thing to call out. It's not like I'll say, don't worry, I must present for the group. No, sometimes I made sure that I contributed in the materials we're going to present and somebody else on my team had to present. So, but I was a very present team member. Inshallah. At the same time, I ensured I was fully involved in like social activities as well. Sorry, Tim Lade, just hold your thoughts. I want to mute everyone so that I unmute you afterwards. Just so a second. Thank my you. Problem. Okay, can you unmute? Are you unmuted now? Yes. If okay, anyone can quiet. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine. I was just trying to say that whilst I was building like a good academic portfolio, at the same time, I was trying to like balance it with like making sure that days we had games, nine, social events, music, karaoke. I was not just in my room sleeping because oh, I've had a very stressful day at Lagos business. I always make sure to be fully involved in those things. Just to like summarize it, for me, I prioritized building like a strong relationship with my court. I am very big on networking. So I wasn't there just to learn. It was good to like learn, network with like the amazing professors we had at Lagos Business School. But I also wanted to have like horizontal relationship with the amazing people that joined my course because we might all join as nobody, but like the next five, 10 years, the people you see as nobody today will become like big people in different spheres of life globally. So I prioritize also like building like a strong relationship with my court. I personally encourage like open communication. I was very open to having conversations with people. I also sort of did like mutual support Summary for me is, and that's my advice I'll give everybody, balance like the rigorous academic demands because the program is going to demand a lot from you academically. You have like back-to-back -back assignments, back-to-back -back cases you have to read before the next day. So try to balance it with the extracurricular activities. One of the things I remember we did one week before resumption was we had like a community service project we had to be involved in. I made sure to be a part of that because prior to joining the program, that means going for the community service project, I remember my team, I was divided to the team that talked about financial inclusion. We went to like an orphanage home, if I'm not wrong, to talk to like the, the amazing children there about like um, financial inclusion. So prior to even officially entering the VIM bootcamp itself, I already connected with some of my VIM colleagues as well by participating in the community service program. So my last words to you regarding this particular topic is please, while you are there to learn, to learn how to be like a good communicator, to learn negotiation skills, to learn decision making. Make sure you are balancing like the academic part with the social part as well, because having like a good network at the end of the program, being able to say, yes, in a class of 100, I was able to genuinely connect with 10 people. I know what they are passionate about. I know what they are interested in. They know what I am passionate about. They know what I'm interested in. That's one of the things that would make the program a success for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim Lade. That was very, very insightful. Okay, so I'm moving on to Toby. And I know that Toby has a, a great experience, rich background as it relates to them. And this is also speaking to the aspects where people are likely to be um, selected to join virtually. 
right? I know that we did not exactly put that question in, but I think it's also important that we address possible candidates or participants that will be put into the virtual section, right? So people that will be joining virtually and all of those things, how do they prepare themselves for it? Um, I mean, remote remote life can be can be taxing, can be consuming, you know, especially for some of them that are engaged as well. How would you advise that they go about it to make the most of the experience? Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much for that question, uh, Toby. I think the first thing I'm going to say to everyone on this call is do everything you can to ensure that you get selected to participate physically. Retweet. Sorry for interrupting you. Retweet. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say this again. Do everything you can to ensure that you get selected to participate in Junior Achievement Nigeria Venture in Management Program 2024 physically or physically. I mean, whichever one you decide to accept. Um, having said that, um, I mean, the experience is not always the same. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I know that, you know, Timmy has, uh, Timmy Nadi has, you know, talked about, you know, high experience, you know, being a physical participant. Uh, for the virtual participants, you, go, you don't get to enjoy some side attractions, you know, but that's not the focus. That's not the question uh, Toby has asked me to answer. Um, the question is, how do remote virtual participants get to uh, maximize their time while participating virtually or remotely. And I will say this because, uh, I mean, I, I, I've been there. I've also been you know, part of the organizers. And I will say to you that you can be a virtual participant and you want to have 80, 90, 100% uh, concentration and still be, you know, doing your other gig, I mean, other work, you know, on the side, you know, so you have a different screen and you're participating in vain. Trust me, you're not, you not participating. So if you really want to maximize the virtual participation, the remote participation, you have to put in 100% concentration. You, you know, I mean, you can be home watching Netflix, cooking, you have friends around, you have your airports or airbots, you know, plug, and you're trying to juggle um, one, two, three things at the same time, trying to multitask. I mean, you would not get good participation. And I'm also going to let you know that the way it is structured, um, Lagos Business School has the technology to ensure that they get to see everybody virtually. And they also get to ensure that you don't miss out on the proceedings of the program, daily proceedings of the program, you know? So they give opportunities to virtual participants to also make contributions. I mean, we've had uh, virtual participants also, you know, emerge as, you know, um, uh, class presidents, assistant, vice, uh, assistant class presidents, uh, best participants, best virtual participants. I mean, some people are not in class physically, but, because they are intentional and because they have dedicated and committed their time during the one week to the program, ensures that they participate 100% and they get the best out of the program. You know, so as much as, you know, I know that it's not everybody that will come in as a physical participant, as a virtual participant to fully maximize your time on the BIM program, you have to concentrate. If you need to take time off work, if you need to shut down your social media for one week, you know, I mean, you may also need to like, you know, put out content, you know, but if you need to just, you know, take a break, take a retreat from distraction from social media, just for you to have, you know, this opportunity to learn and to benefit. And I'm also going to say that, um, um, 
I mean, I no longer work with uh, Gene Achieve in Nigeria, but I mean, I hope I have you know the permission of uh, management and Toby to say that last year we had some virtual participants come in physically on the final day. And these people were selected based off of their active concentration and active class participation. So they had some of the side attractions of, you know, the food, uh, pictures, being in class, you know, live physically, you know. So there's somebody who is also checking, who is also checking and watching to ensure that you have full concentration. And for virtual participants, I, I, I can't remember the exact percentage. Attendance is taken every day. If you don't have up to, I mean, goodness or Toby can correct me, but I think if you don't have up to 70 or 80 percent um, um, class attendance and participation, your certificate for venture in mining program will not be issued to you. So it's not for you to just be online and you know leave your screen and then you're out, you're doing other things, you're not speaking. It, it doesn't work like that for BIM. You don't pay for it. And the organization, Junior Achievement Nigeria, is very, very intentional about the impact that will be made in the beneficiaries of this program. So you have to participate 100% active class participation, read your case studies, analyze your cases. You are going to be, you know, groups. So you post class, after classes on a daily basis, you have group sessions, virtual sessions with some of the physical participants, depending on how they are grouped. So aside the fact that you don't get to enjoy some of the side attractions, you know, for, for um, with which the physical participants get to enjoy, you being a virtual participant, there's no discrimination between, or there's no distinction between you being virtual and you being physical. But you just have to do yourself the best that you can do for yourself to ensure that you have active participation. I think I'll just end it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Toby. Um, and I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> I want to say the devil is a liar. <laughs> Okay, so um, thank you everyone for participating in the session and we'll just go back to the question and answer segment. So before I go on, I just want to add um, to the fact that you get out what you put in, right? There are some people that even after participating physically, they were not able to get like awesome impact. And that's because of um, they didn't put in their best during the participation, like Toby mentioned. So um, regardless of where you fall into the virtual participant or the um, physical participants, just give in your best. And if you need to take out time from work, like Toby has mentioned, please do that because it's worth it, right? Giving your best as it relates to relationship, giving your best as it relates to academics, giving your best because the program is holistic and you don't want to miss out on any aspect. So now I'll go over to the question and answer bit. I'll try and answer the ones that I can answer. And for the ones that are more technical, I'll just push it over to our facilitators. So the first question I have here is, um, when is the deadline for submitting the application? So the deadline for submitting the application is the 24th of June. And then the program commencement is also the um 9th of september um then the next question says please does the sponsorship cover cost of transportation from various cities to lagos okay so no actually it doesn't cost you are literally coming for a fully sponsored um engagement that has to do with business and then your career right and if you've like gone through stories about being you'd understand that we are covering for your meal and we're also covering for the your living expenses basically not living expenses but accommodation right and that includes your meal and also transportation to the venue so we won't be covering for transportation down in case you are outside lagos then the next bit says that also as an um, enthusiast of finance and um private markets, how can I develop my intent in the program? Awesome question. I don't know which panelist wants to take that, but I would like for Iyanu to go first. Iyanu, because I know that Iyanu is a business enthusiast and it would help with that question. Do you want me to take yeah, it again? Thank you. 
No, I, I get a question. I think I saw it on the group as well. So yeah, if you're in uh, finance, venture capital, private equity, um, I'm currently, of course, not in private equity, but I'm in the financial service space. And the program is really, really helpful, especially in the area of uh, finance and accounting. I think eventually, if even in equity, one of the very important skills is um, strategy and uh, even in across you know investment fields so that's one of the things that you'll be learning as well um for instance you you can think of the program as a typical mba but a launch into the mba an mba is holistic it covers everything from finance to management to uh, marketing to sales, like everything about business that you can think about, even leadership, because there's an eti ethical leadership part. So just it's just about um, you um, deciding what part of the um, uh, sessions you want to really maximize. And trust me, even whatever field you have, uh, one thing that the program will always leave you with is your leadership skill would help you be a better leader. And that's something that cuts across every industry that you can find yourself. So there are also opportunities. I think some of the some of the partners of this program are in those fields that you're talking about. So um, you could be strategic about opportunities like the career fairs to identify the companies that will be coming and now you can leverage that opportunity to secure a job. You should start working on your CV right now should start checking out of how to prepare for interviews for those opportunities. So for all in all, you would definitely enjoy the program irrespective of the future. Thank you so much, Yanu, for that um, answer. Um, I don't know, Temi, do you, would you like to add to it? So sorry, I missed the question, to be honest. Feel free, if you don't mind helping me. Because... Okay, yes, definitely. So, so the question says, also as an enthusiast of finance and the, and the private market, how can I develop my intent in the program? Okay, awesome. So I think Iano did great justice because to be fair, I'm not in like the um, finance space. But I think one of the things I can say is, one of the opportunities that the program gives you is you get the opportunity to like understand what happens within like Lagos Business School. When Toby was sharing his story, it was the VIM program that sort of like motivated him to um, join Lagos Business School, which in the long run he did like the MBA for I think about two years. And one of the things you learn during your MBA program is like finance, private equity, and every other like topic that has to do with business. So maybe whilst you are pitching your story, you can genuinely just let the VIM. Um, the VIM team know that one of the reasons why you want to join the program is an opportunity to like understand what happens within Lagos Business School because you'll be in the Lagos Business School for like one week. That means you have access to some of the professors, have like copy chats with them, let them know your like career interest. They could even guide you on how you could like apply into like Lagos Business School and get the best out of the program. But I think Iano did justice to the conversation already. I'm just like putting that as a hard on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yana and then Timmy. So the next question is, is there a more priority for virtual participants over on-site participants during the screening process? So I wouldn't say there's a priority. I would say that in the screening process, just like you have um, exams, different exams for different purposes, that is like GRE and the likes, and when you went, want to get into grad school, right, um, those scores matter when you want to get into grad school. So for example, if you are getting to like an Harvard, right, you need those scores to ensure that oh, you have one of the top participants to be able to get into top schools like that. So that's basically it. When it comes to this program, there are different criteria that we look out for in participants and there are pointers to it. So basically the higher your score, the higher the um, chances of getting into physical and then we then move to virtual participants. So I hope that clarifies for that person. So so the next question is, please, how can we get access to essays of previous applicants and alumni? Okay, so I do not think you can get access to that because if you remember one of the um, answers that was given to you or one of the um, one of the words that one of the participants or one of the well, the speaker said what was, you have to know why. 
So this, this info session is an intervention plan for you to understand what VIMP is all about, right? And also um, how you can leverage your passion or those pain points you have in the society for the application. So it's not like we are giving you like an expo, but just helping you see how that very pain point you have for your community can be channeled into an application of this kind. And that's why we brought in um, different speakers who sort of have those passions to help you through the application process, right? So I'll allow Temi go on um, with this question. Temi, thank you, Temi, you can go ahead. Awesome, awesome. So I just wanted to add to, I don't think, I would advise everyone who is interested, don't be concerned about trying to see like the essay because we, just, we all have our unique stories. We all have different things that's like, we're like turning point in our lives. Don't be too focused on, can I see somebody else's draft? I think it's not going to help you. Vim just wants your story to be personable and relatable. Don't just copy someone else's draft. And she, like Toby and um, Yanu mentioned, for me, whilst I was applying, there were three key elements I looked at. It, I wanted to either talk about my passion, my passion or talk about like a societal problem I have faced, I'm interested, you know, maybe like personal experience and just to double down on that in terms of like passion, you can identify and even articulate like what you are genuinely passionate about, not someone else's dream and vision, your own dream and vision. It could be about you're interested in the energy sector of Nigeria. You see yourself becoming the president of Nigeria or Africa sometime in future. It could be a business concept. It could be like a social cause. So I'm very sure that VIMP wants to see your enthusiasm and your dedication. That's one thing that will make your application stand out. If it even has to do with like societal problem, I would say a life societal problem you're interested in. That was what I submitted during my own application. I'm a very big, strong advocate of more girls in STEM. And that was the story I told because VIMP is designed to like prepare future business leaders who are socially conscious. So if you can share that kind of story, that a real story, not a fake story, like real story, share examples of places you volunteered at or volunteered for, that'd be very interesting. And that one could be like a personal experience. You could use your personal experience to share your story, your unique background, because we all have unique background and different challenges that we have all Based. This can like provide like a strong foundation for you doing your application. So please don't be concerned about seeing somebody else's essay. Be concerned about sharing your own unique and genuine story because those are things like that the VIMP team is looking out for. Thank you so much, Demladi. And I would also like for Toby to add to this because I've seen his comment and I think that you should have something very important to say. Okay, uh, thank you very much, um, goodness. I mean, Timmy Lade has, you know, said it, you know, very spot on. And that's why I started with your passion, your drive, your motivation, you know, like what, what inspires you, you know. You don't have to, I mean, we're all different. It's just the way life is. We're all different human beings. We have different desires, different drives, different passions. And the truth is, the people who are checking your, the panel who uh, will be checking your applications, they know when you are, you are you know, being mischievous. I mean, permit me to use that word. They know when you are not genuine. They know when you are not real. It's, it's some sort of discernment, you know? So you have to be as real as possible so that you don't even make it appear or make it seem like, it's not your dream, it's not your desire, it's not your puzzle, you know? So I'm just going to say, find something that is all about yourself. Find something that you are passionate about. Find something that um, is your own cause, you know, C-A-U-S-E, and be very real. Don't, don't look for your chat GPT or uh, copy and paste, you know, template, somebody's story. I mean, if it's not your story, it's not your story. You know, so don't don't be all you know bent on um, looking for somebody's write up, somebody's article, you know, to get them into uh, a theme. It, it's it's. I mean, there's nothing else to add. I, I will just say, be be real, be yourself, be you, and just tell your story. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. You know, an elaborate story, something that is just a cause that. Um, a, a, an interviewer can, you know, see and genuinely say that, oh, no, this person is passionate about it. Because there's a way you talk about your passion, you know, that the person you are talking to would understand if, you know, this is real or it's a fluke. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.
Yeah, so I'll go over to another question. It says, can recent graduate with one of um what with one year of post NYSC experience apply for the program? So yes, so you can apply for venture management program if one you are a recent graduate, that is you just graduated from school and maybe you have like few months to get into um NYSC. And if you have already done your NYSC and it's not more than one year. So you can apply for venture management program if you fall into that bracket. Then um, the next um, question, I think we already answered this. It says, please, is there, is there a virtual or physical interview after passing the online? Okay, so yes, there's a um, virtual interview for everyone, right? After the online application, which are currently in. Once you pass the online application, we then go over to the interview process, which will be virtual. Yeah, so um, another thing to note about Venture Management Program too as well is that it's for 2-1 and the first class students. So terms and conditions apply basically, <laughs> right? So that's the bracket for Venture Management um, Program. So I'd just like for our speakers to give us like a wrap up word, like each of them, right? Just tell us something that you feel like the participant or current applicant should go home with after this session. So I'll start with Tammy, then move over to Toby, then we'll go to Yanu. Yeah, Tammy, over to you. Awesome, thank you so much. My last word for you is going to be, again, this is a very competitive program. This is a program that has been in existence for over 10 years, if I am not wrong. And I would say that I give it your best. And the best way to give it your best is by being you and not like taking someone else's story. Try your best to submit like the best of resume. Try your best to submit like the best of essays. If there is a third video, don't wait till the last day where PHCN might not give you like that's when you want to shoot your video where everywhere is dark. Like now the application is opened and it closes like in a few days or in a few weeks. Why not take some time, maybe over the weekend, give it like a thorough, um, a thorough, like because it's very competitive, like I've said. But at the same time, even if you get in physically, even if you get it get in, get in virtually, please give it your best. If you are like a virtual participant, Please don't let that discourage you. No doubt, the best of experiences if you are a physical participant, or even if you eventually get to join like virtually, please don't let that discourage you. Make sure that if you can take time off work, I promise you everything. These are like professors that have schooled in amazing like places outside of Africa, and they are coming to instill knowledge into us. Like just calm down, take days off work, off NYSC or whatsoever have your laptop, maybe be like in a cyber cafe. I, I don't think cyber cafes exist anymore, but like in a cafe, be very serious as if there is an exam at the end of the whole thing, because I promise it's going to be worth it. And please make sure whilst you are there, you want to network with the professor, this one professor, that one. Those things are good. Why you want to network with all the amazing speakers that will come and speak? Those things are good, but please also network with everybody you meet here. Don't underestimate anybody, your roommate, your study mate, genuinely want to know people, have like a plan before you even get into the program. Once you've got the acceptance email, have like a unique plan. This is what I'm doing each day. Don't be distracted by things up, happening outside of the four walls of Lagos Business School, your hotel. Immerse yourself into the program because whatever energy you give is the same thing you will get back in return. But above all, please just drop your genuine story. And I'm really rooting for everyone. Looking forward to seeing like the release of Vim Class 2024. So congratulations to everyone in advance. And shout out once again to the Vim team. You have been an amazing, amazing job. I'm so proud to be an alum of the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Demi. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. So now we'll go back to Toby. Toby, please, the final words. OK, um, thank you very much, goodness, and the um, organizers of BIM from Virginia Achievement Nigeria. Uh, my final words will be three or four um, statements. Uh, first, I wanted to say, you know, Temi said um, she thinks VIMP is more than 10 years. VIMP is more than 20 years. I think this is the 22nd or the 23rd edition for VIMP. Wow. So I, I, was going to, I was going to say that one. Uh, then secondly, I mean, second um, um, final words is to um, successful applicants, you know, I want to let you know, I mean, successful applicants, successful physical participants, I want to let you know that um, you cannot just get into the four walls of Lagos Business School anyhow. 
Um, I'm saying this, you know, as a follow up to what Timmy had mentioned. Don't get carried away. Don't get carried away. In Lagos Business School, on the corridors in Lagos Business School, you can be walking side by side the CEO of Chevron, an executive director in a bank. I mean, the VIPs and the high net worth individuals that you see on TV, you see their profiles on LinkedIn, you know, so you really need to have a plan, be bold, be courageous. We have seen people who on the corridors of Lagos business who walk up to certain individuals and they get their first jobs post venture in management program. So you have to be smart. You have to be discerning, you have to be bold, you have to be courageous, you have to be responsible, you know. You know, so so that's my second. The third one is to everyone, to physical and virtual participants. Um Timmy mentioned relationships, networking, and I will tell you that you have to be deliberate and intentional about your relationships. I leave you with just two quotes. The first one, relationships are advantageous connections. And the second one is that whatever money can buy, relationships can pay for it. Don't struggle through life trying to pay or purchase for anything and everything you need with money. You need relationships. So for the participants, you need to build a phone. You're going to have a WhatsApp group that you, you have for life. You need to build relationship with yourself. You will recommend yourselves for opportunities. You will share opportunities. You will share good news. You will share testimonials, you know, with yourself. So you just have to, I mean, you always don't have to be friends. You know, you, you may not, you guys are not going to be together for life. But I'm telling you that five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years after, you guys will need each other. So you may not be friends in class. You may not like each other. I mean, this was, uh, this were the words of uh, the country CEO of GB Foods, Vincent Igbe, in 2022. Yeah, in 2020, when he came to class to speak to the participants. You may not like each other, but you will need each other. I have said this to say that you know, during the program, especially for the, you know, physical participants, you have issues with people, you may not agree, it is normal, it is expected. But whatever it is, you have to settle, and you have to sort it out because you may not like each other, but you will definitely need each other. And I would round up by saying that for those of you who may not make it uh, to the program, don't feel bad. I'm sorry, but I just have to also encourage you. Don't feel bad. There are other opportunities. If you are still within the age range, you can always reapply and you know you can still be considered. But we have had this information session today to guide you as to how your application can be the best. So if you don't get shortlisted, there's something you are not doing right, or there's something you're not doing well. L you know, put up your application, review it with you know experienced practitioners, get guidance, get direction from people. And I'll round up by saying that if you know how to do your research very, very well, we have previous uh, beneficiaries of uh, VIMP, previous VIMP alums who deliberately and intentionally guide people to put in their application. And these people have shared testimonies on LinkedIn. And that's what I'm saying, if you know how to do your research very well, these people have put testimonials on LinkedIn as to how they have guided people. And you can imagine one person bringing in about five, six, seven people on the BIM program. So go and do your network, find people, use the right keywords, give it your best shots, do your best and ensure that you get shortlisted. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Toby. Thank you. Yeah, please give me your best. Do your best to uh, give me your best shot, basically. All right. So next we go to Ianu. Ianu, please, you want your final words. I know that your network has been doing a lot of things, but I hope you're here now. Yes, I'm here. So uh, my final word is to um, determine from now what you want to get from the program. I think it's always something that has been very pivotal for me if I'm going for programs. There's a lot of distractions in most of programs. Like there's a lot of activities. Now, of course, you want to participate in everything, but you want to also be very strategic about what you are doing in the program at every point in time because you will be drained you'll be drained from assignment you'll be drained from case studies you'll be drained from group work so you want to make sure that you have a good balance before you get to the program and you already identify what your priorities are so when there are times that you need to choose between this and this you know what your priority is um i wouldn't discourage participating in the program but i also advise that you need to be thinking about what am I going to get out of this program? At the end of this, at the end of this program, in the next one, two, three years, what do I need from this program that is going to take me to the next stage of my life? Is it a connection? Is it the network? Is it a network with the faculty members? Is it a network with some organizations around the LBC uh, in the LBC uh, LBCS community? Once you can identify that, you are like one way. Um, but like almost at a point where you are going to really maximize the program. So that's that's going to be my biggest advice. If there's any other thing that I would say, is to have fun. Have fun. Like, let people have fun around you. People will always remember people that make them have fun. So if you go there and you are all these, you, you're like the most serious person, you don't talk to people, you're in class, you're just focused, you don't interact, you don't, you don't crack jokes, you don't laugh... Your people are different. Your colleagues are probably just going to think you are creepy and probably you are too competitive. And you know, at the end of the day, you need people more than accolades that you think that doing some of those things will get you. So, two things determine what you're going to get from the program now and plan ahead. If it means you start researching about people that are coming for the program, researching about uh, names, about companies, being strategic about making sure that you are ticking the box. I want to meet this company, I met them. I want to meet this person, I met them. I want to meet this person, I met the person. First one. Then the second one, I want to be fun. I want people to remember me as someone that makes um, the atmosphere lit up with energy. I want to come with a positive energy. I want to be the person that everybody wants to be around. Because at the end of the day, that's going to stand you out from many other persons. Thank you. Like it's frozen. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I was frozen, right? Yeah. Oh my God, what was the last thing I said? It just, you said determine, and that's why you froze. Yeah, I, so I was summarizing. Determine what you want to do. Do you want to start reaching out to organizations from now? Do you, um, not reaching out, do you want to start identifying organizations that are coming for the program, maybe from past career fairs, so that you can start making a list of people you want to network with? Do you want to research about organizations within the LBS community? There are bodies and other institutions there that you probably want to build relationship with. And the second thing is make yourself fun to be with. Because people will always remember people that make them feel good. So don't go there and be acting all too serious. Go there and have fun and let people feel a positive energy around you. Yep. Thank you so much, Diana. I mean, thank you for the addition. I think one of the things that I feel like I wish I did better when I was um, participating in VIMP was that fun aspect. Um, I think I was too serious. And... I just really wanted to get all the academic side to it. And so the social bit for me was not really um, up to par. But like Iano and other speakers have said, please invest in your social skills, invest in um, every aspect of the program because you never can tell where the next, um, next stop of your life is coming from or next process of your life is coming from. It could just be a random conversation. So... <laughs> So I, I can see Toby's comment, that's why I'm laughing. 
Um, so invest in every aspect of the pro program and giving your best in every aspect of the program, right? So um, thank you so much, everybody, for making our time to join this session. It was really amazing, right? And I really want for everyone to give in their best while applying for this program. And understand that this is really an intervention plan for you. And um, you can go over to think about whatever it is that, that have been said on this call, to think about your why, to think about the need to reach out to certain people, especially as it deals with your career or as it deals with the entrepreneurship um, solution that you want to give to your society and how to tell your story even for the application process or even places where you must have led and you even thought it wasn't important but now you need it for this application so it's time to go back and reflect and then giving your best as you apply for the venture management program but bear in mind that as you go on thinking there's a deadline right so we would be um, closing the application on the 24th of June, that is June this this June, right? So tighten up everything you need to tighten up. Then also the program will start, like I mentioned, on the 9th of September. And also pay attention to Junior Achievement Nigeria um, social media platforms. We are Junior Achievement Nigeria on Facebook and then on LinkedIn and then on Instagram and then Twitter, we are JA Nigeria. So pay attention to our platform. Also, when you're telling your story, there'll be a time you'd have to tell your story about what you've currently um, learned. And then even in the next process, maybe you get selected as a physical or the virtual participant. Make sure you tag Junior Achievement Nigeria and tag us properly so we can do a repost. So before we end the session, I'll be calling on Kilali David West to help us with a closing remark. Kilali David West is the program officer, is one of our program officers in Junior Achievement Nigeria. So over to you, Kilali. Thank you. Hi, goodness. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much. I hope you can all hear me and see me. Um, thank you all. Um, to our amazing panelists, Timila De, Toby, and Iyanu for such an insightful session. I was motivated um, by listening to this session as well. Thank you, goodness, for being such an amiable moderator. And I just want to give a special thank you to all um, our participants who are here, um, who have joined, who are either on the Zoom call, who are joined by our live stream. Thank you all so much for making time during this public holiday um, just for us to hear the session. Um, like goodness said, good luck with the applications. Give it your all. Um, we want to hear about you. We want to see what you want um, out of this program. And we want this program to benefit you in making an impact in society. So thank you so much. Thank you so much to our speakers for making time. Uh, we really appreciate um, alumni coming back to us and always engaging with us and always giving back to us. So please, thank you so much. Thank you, goodness. Please, I need everyone to give a round of applause to goodness because really and truly she helped put everything together and she's been an amiable moderator. Thank you to all, um, you know, to the Jan team, um, the Jan team working on them and thank you to all our um, participants. Like Dunas mentioned, there's a deadline, there are some conditions and please, if you have to put Junior Achievement Nigeria, like you have to like put the post notifications, put all the post notifications. If you have to sign up to our newsletter, sign up to our newsletter so that you don't miss out on any information when it comes to VIM 2024. And we hope to see you as part of the VIM 2024 cohort.